Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome to Bitch, the ice cream truck is about to come by. I hear it. Do I want to go to the ice cream truck? Okay, who am I kidding? I kind of want some ice cream. Let me go. Let me go see. I mean, with Sissy here, you might as well. Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome to today's video. For those of you who are new, this may be your first time coming across my channel, watching one of my videos, which means you are probably not yet subscribed. Welcome, my name is Tyler with an O, and for those of you who are already subscribed, already my people, and just returning for another video, welcome on that. So, as some of you, most of you, all of you should know, it is Pride Month. So I figured in honor of Pride Month, today's video would be doing a little bit of a story time, but also a little bit of advice around the topic of just coming out and what my experience with it was or wasn't. I actually started using a makeup primer. This is literally my second time using it but this is just the Maybelline Master Prime Fate Studio um, primer I mean it does feel like oh my god did I just wipe off my eyebrow anyways let me tell you about the day that I woke up gay <laughs> no I'm just kidding but I will tell you about the day that I decided to be gay also just kidding seeing other people talk about their experience with like finding out or you know just what gay being gay and representation and how all that stuff mattered and affected them in their childhood I don't know I never really turned it turned it around and started thinking about it for myself I don't feel like I ever like necessarily knew I was Gay. I know I used to get bullied for it a lot. Of course, there was a time when I knew, like, okay, girl, you gay. <laughs> girl, you gay. But as far as that whole moment where people felt different or they felt, you know, they didn't really know, I just liked what I liked. I don't think I was ever really too concerned with what other people liked to think that I was abnormal. I guess for me, it was more of I knew that I was attracted to boys. And when I'm saying this, I'm saying as early as like, kindergarten and it's so funny and my first crush was this white boy his name was um josh and we were like best friends and so i just took it i was like you know that's my best friend you know i like being around him but i do know like i just was very fond of him and just going on into like daycare and going into like i don't know if you guys were in like safe key or if you guys had like an after school program or anything like that when you were young but for me um, i definitely was in that as a child and it was just little things like that that was my outlet to be able to play with barbie and betty spaghetti and things like that but i'm just saying like at this time at that age i did not associate barbie's boys playing with like makeup and you know when we would play dress up or when we would play house i would always want to be the mom or i'd want to be like you know the pretty sister i always wanted to be like the love interest with all of the boys that we were playing with and everything like that i never really thought like hmm why am i different how come none of the other boys wanted this i just this is what I like to do and so that is what I did and of course it came with a lot of bullying and ridicule and everything but in my household it was never directly like put in my head that like this was a bad thing um, And I talked about this in like my DL uh, five year relationship video. If you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch it. It'll be up here, I believe somewhere up there. Even know that I was attracted to other boys and stuff at a very young age, like very early on. And I was fully aware of that. I was not unattracted to girls. And so that is even why to this day, I don't necessarily choose to identify oh my god is this the right concealer that's even why like to this day i don't necessarily choose to identify as gay um i don't know it just I, it doesn't feel like it fits for me you know and so i don't because i don't mind i don't have any issues with pronouns and if people say gay because that's easier for them to understand or comprehend or associate with me and what they see fine i it just really doesn't make a difference either way for me just because like i am secure and kind of know who i am and what i like and regardless of what 
word or label that you or society or anybody wants to put on it, it literally doesn't make any difference for me as to what I do in my personal life and behind closed doors. You know what I'm saying? But back to the point, when I was getting into like high school and middle school and dating and everything like that, I had girlfriends. Like, you know, I dated girls and everything in high school and it wasn't anything as far as like you know, using them as a cover up or being a them being a beard or anything like that. I genuinely was attracted to girls as much as I was attracted to guys. So that is just my story as it pertains to like orientation and coming out and just kind of getting to know myself in that aspect. I guess what it was for me is like, you know, people told me what I should be interested in as a boy and you know, the things that I should like. And I guess my struggle was just like, I hear you, but I also am not interested in those things. I'm not interested in like the heteronormative, you know, lifestyle. It just did not interest me. I did not feel like I had a place in it. And so therefore it just never was, it just was never true to me. So recently I befriended this guy um, and he is a straight black male. Within our communication, um, I guess in a way he kind of came out to me. It didn't catch me by surprise, but I guess what was just surprising was how relieved and how freeing it felt for him to be able to finally like talk about these feelings with somebody. And I always just feel so, I don't want to say honored because I feel like that might be a little bit much, but I take it as a huge compliment when people feel you know, comfortable enough to be themselves around me and confide in me and consider me a credible source for whatever it is that they're going through in their life. And that's exactly kind of what happened in our friendship. And so I bring this up because we were having a conversation. I was telling him like, oh yeah, I was Urban Pride here in Houston and I was going to these events, whatever, whatever. Because I was explaining to him that although, yes, LGBT this and that, a lot of those things do not apply if you are black. I went to, and I'm gonna say it again. A lot of the equality and pro LGBT rhetoric and all of that within the community doesn't necessarily apply to black people. So why y'all thinking everything is sugar and sweet over here, girl, it ain't. It's very much divided and that's why we need urban prides and things like that and that's why we have them. Because in the regular prides, while yes, they, rep they, they say equality for all and all of that, it is very discriminatory. The events are discriminatory, they don't. Anyways, girl, I can get into a whole soapbox about that. But yeah, so when I was telling him that we had an urban pride and you know, spaces for uh, the black gay community to come together and to celebrate and all of that thing during a separate separate time he, I, I felt like he kind of like let that slip and he was saying like that's cool that we have spaces like that and so I was like we okay and he was like oh, it sounds like I need to hurry up and come out so I can stop missing out on the fun and so my response to him saying like I need to hurry up and come out because I'm missing out on all the fun I told him like while yes, you know, you are missing out on the fun by restricting yourself from going to such events or whatever, even though you want to, that's really not what you're really missing out on. What you're more missing out on is just the ability, because there's an entire different world, an entire different community, a different group of people with similarities that you don't even know that you have, an entire uh, amount of relationships, both platonic and romantic, that you could be missing out on, ultimately missing out of, on a lot of your happiness. You're missing out on loving yourself. You're missing out on being able to navigate this world and do the things that you like to do and discover passions and be you without shame. You're missing out on what that feels like to be unapologetically yourself and ultimately I told him like you know the, that whole thing is definitely a journey and it's custom to everybody everybody has different things at stake you know unfortunately we don't live in a world where you can just openly walk around and come out and not have to worry about losing things losing relationships losing money losing opportunities and things like that unfortunately we have not made it there yet but also you have to remember that time stops for nobody and this goes with a lot of things like you know a lot of people can relate to waiting for the right time and it's just like when is gonna be the right time for you to start living your life is there a right time for you to start living your life 
And so he was saying like ultimately what his fears were in coming out and basically that he was just afraid uh, for people to start treating him differently. He feels as though, you know, saying or declaring that he is gay or whatever, however he chooses to identify, the people in his life are going to start treating him differently, although he is the same person. And that is incredibly, incredibly valid. However, what I posed to him then was the fact that you're afraid of the people currently in your life to start treating you differently or to start treating you worse or look at you differently? How valuable is a relationship or how important is it to, to you to cling to a relationship with somebody that only survives because you don't get to be yourself? You do want people to treat you differently. Well, yes, losing people sucks. And, you know, disappointing people or uh, having people think a certain way or think less of you. No, that's not fun. And that's not what I'm saying by any stretch of the imagination. But what I'm saying and what I told him was that if people decide to leave your life or to shun you or to shame you or walk out on you because of something like that, you might not see it now, but ultimately you're doing yourself a incredible favor you are going to be so much happier once they are gone because their absence equals your freedom. If I am surrounded by people who don't allow me to be myself, if I can't say the things that I naturally would want to say, love who I want to love, if I can't go to places that I want to go without fear of being judged and ridiculed, if I'm missing out on a lifetime full of opportunities because of what the people who are currently in my life are going to say about it. Doesn't that kind of sound like they're blocking your, you know what I'm saying? Wouldn't you much rather have relationships with people who like you for you? This is something else that I want to make very clear. I feel like society has really like romanticized, not romanticized, but really sensationalized the whole idea of coming out all together and I feel like that's where a lot of his apprehension was based it was this whole notion of like oh I'm afraid to come out and what I had to explain to him was like don't let media and all of that shape what coming out or define what coming out looks like or means for you in your personal life please hear me when I say this there doesn't have to be any type of external declaration at all. And that's what I told him. It's all about just deciding. Well, not deciding because it's not really like something that you could just decide that really trivializes it. But it's just like being able to maneuver and walk around in this world as yourself without all of the shame that other people would like to attach to it. You don't have to carry that baggage. You don't have to own that. You don't have to hold that. You don't have to sit in that. You don't have to experience that. You don't have to subscribe to that. And I know it's incredibly easier said than done. You don't have to make a long paragraph post on Facebook about it, sharing everything with the world. If you want to, if you feel so inclined, then by all means do that. But ultimately what I'm saying is like, there's not just one way. And that's in life, that's in being queer, gay, bisexual, all of that. Like, it is how you identify, not how society and how other people identify you. Anyways, girl, let me go ahead and put on my liner, lashes, scara, and lip, and then we'll be back to finish this face. The look is served. Y'all know how I feel about it. Everything always comes together once you hit it with that liner lashes scare like we like to do. Oh, grr. No, but for the lashes today, I decided not to put on a pair of lashes. Instead, I did just a little baby wing. I uh, put some inner corner highlight on the inside, and then I did my lips a dark brown liner with this nice, like, I don't know what you call it, like a nudie, pinky brown, I don't know, but you see what it's giving. It's giving soft glam, it's giving cunt. And I live for this face. Now, I actually gotta do something else. And if you see this face in another video, girl, you better act like it's your first time, okay? But on a serious note, happy Pride Month to everybody. I hope you found this video informative, if not entertaining, or both. I always encourage people to just be who they are, express yourselves, and ultimately, it is your life to live. It's your journey, it's your future, it's your past, it's your memories, it's your experiences, it's your happiness, ultimately. And I just feel like people need to start taking that into control, you know, regardless of how you feel about the current world and situation that we're living in right now. Of course, being able to live publicly, 
loud, live, and in color is a privilege depending on where you are from and in, in your circumstances. And that's why I emphasize that it is your journey. Do what feels right for you. Do what feels safe for you. But also do not live your life afraid to take risks, especially when it comes to betting on yourself. You can do this. And on that note, make sure that you give this video a big gay ass thumbs up. Comment down below on anything else you'd like to see here on this channel. And most importantly, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any more of this Tyler with the No Goodness. Okay. Oh, girl, my hair looking all crazy. And you wasn't gonna say nothing. And I will catch you all on my next video. Peace. Don't ask my neighbor, never ask the friends I hang around.